Are you looking for some fun and cool ways to upgrade your YouTube backdrop? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to give you five tips for how I upgraded my YouTube backdrop with some ideas and inspiration about my process along the way. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Joelle, the Everyday Avant Garde, where I talk about all things art, business, and creative lifestyle related. Uh, let's just start off by going down and hit that subscribe button below. Show me some love so you can stay up to date with all of my new content and videos. And let's get started. So on today's video, I wanted to talk about my YouTube backdrop makeover that I did um, just last week. And if you've been following my videos, you've seen that in previous ones, my background was, uh, it wasn't the worst, but it definitely wasn't the best. And for me as an artist who also has an experience um, working as a set designer in movies, uh, it really started to bother me. And I was like, Joelle, you should be having a set that reflects what you do and what you're about so that people, if they just happen to watch one video, at least they can get a general idea of like your personality and your aesthetic, et cetera, et cetera. And I think this is something that is very important for anyone that's doing YouTube or video content to be mindful of the surroundings in which they are shooting their videos. Um, because there's a lot that viewers pick up on subconsciously that they read, maybe not even just subconsciously, like sometimes it's just obvious, um, but uh, they can find things that they relate to in your personality. It gives you an idea of what sort of thing you're providing that viewer beyond just the words coming out of your mouth. Um, and I think it also just makes you look more professional and more like an authority in whatever you are trying to um, teach. So... Yeah, I, as I mentioned, I was having an issue with my background and I said, you know what, let's just switch this up. And I was able to do it in a day with a few minor tweaks, um, but I'm going to explain to you what I did and give you some of the tips that I learned along the way. The first thing I did was I, I um, flipped, I had this bookshelf behind me and it holds all my art supplies and it's great and all that. Um, but sometimes it was appearing in my videos and it was brown and it was just giving like a big block of brown and which that's not really colors I generally choose. Um, but it's a great shelf unit for like what it is. You know, I got it from the Asda section and Ikea and, um, you know, it's very like diverse. It can fit a lot of stuff. Um, but it just wasn't working with that layout and same thing with my desk. So what I decided to do was take everything off the shelf wipe it down and um, flip it over on its side. And that will lead me to my first step I have for you, which is to create, first of all, a sort of a blank canvas, have a blank slate, whether it's a corner in your house or a wall, indoor, outdoor, whatever, but at least just have some kind of blank slate to um, start with that you can add things onto. And I think by taking away everything at first, it made it easier for me to sort of be more intentional and thoughtful about how I was placing them and thinking about how it will be showing up on camera, in the frame, et cetera. Um, and then, so my next step, once I took everything down, was I started to slowly put stuff back and I added a couple things that I already had, but I thought they would work better um, with, with some of the other things I was putting back as well. Um, and so my second tip is to fill it with, fill your space once it's blank, fill it with things that are relevant to your channel topic content. Um, and also things that maybe give some little hints of your personality or things that you enjoy. Um, so for me as an artist, um, you know, I knew I wanted my, my background before was very plain. So I knew I wanted to have some more color. Um, I had this moss ball aquarium that was like sitting behind a nook in my apartment behind the printer and like, it was just like cluttered and it didn't look good. And the whole reason I bought this was because I really liked the colorful rocks and stuff the the terranium and the colorful lights in it and stuff. And so I thought I should do it justice and give it a proper home where you could see it. Um, and then this, this, um, these little drawers I had painted, spray painted a while back. And I thought that they pair really nicely with the aquarium because they have similar colors. 
Um, these plants I purchased from the dollar store. They're little fake succulents, but I thought that they also matched really well. Um, and so like everything doesn't have to match perfectly, but at least to have a little bit of cohesion, I think keeps it clean. But I think there's ways that you can have cohesion and still keep it interesting and exciting. And so that's what, that's what I've been trying to do with this background. Um, and then I had a, like disco balls. They were my background before, but I just decided to kind of scatter them back here to catch the light and just add a little more visual interest. And then over on this side, I have, um, these rainbow uh planters also from the dollar store with my sharpies in rainbow order and some art books so at least like so people are watching my channel they're gonna understand like okay this girl is into something creative or something artsy um so even if i'm on mute like you get, at least can get a sort of a feel for my personality and honestly i think that's what a um a good youtube backdrop should do Granted, if you're just doing straight like instructional and business videos, um, of course you want to keep it like clean and tidy and stuff, but I feel like I don't see a lot of personality in those types of backgrounds so much. They'll have like maybe a plant or a bookshelf and it's like somewhat out of focus and like that's, that's all fine and everything. But for me specifically as being an artist, I knew I wanted something with a little more life and color because that's what I'm trying to teach people and that's what I'm trying to express to the world and so I thought it was super important for me for my set to reflect that to my audience as well um and then my third tip for having a unique YouTube background is to add some uh elements of lighting for for depth and it just adds more visual interest too I think um so when I turn the desk in the in the video um it's now it's perpendicular so on this side i have natural light which is perfect for one when i have to do product photography i have a table that is already by the window so that's like that's great for that and then also for doing videos whether it's zoom calls or youtube or uh, you know instagram whatever live videos TikToks. Um, there's already one good source of natural lighting here. And then I do have one ring light as well that I use, um, that is just right to this direction. I don't even know that it's not, I guess it's almost 45 degree angle. Um, and so like I saw some YouTube setups where they were, I, I did a bunch of research on this on YouTube before I did, uh, before I changed my background and I was looking for sets and a lot of these people have like really beautiful stuff, but they just have like so much, um, equipment and products and and I honestly when you're first getting started it can be kind of overwhelming to know what's going to work for you and what's not especially depending on how much physical space you have to work with um so I was like okay that's like too much for me but I could definitely just throw in some you know colored lights like the ring light I think is important but if you have a good source of natural light uh oftentimes you don't even need a ring light I just do that to add a little extra um quality to the video with more clarity because uh, it would look a little bit dramatic with the natural light on this side this sh side would be a little more shadow um but yeah I don't have an elaborate lighting setup it's very simple it's just the window and one ring light which I purchased on offer for $25 so it's very low budget very practical um and then as you can see I also do have some lights in the background I got uh, a pack of light bulbs this one is awesome it changes to like 20 different colors and then it can be a normal tone as well um, so when I'm, you know, you're not always in the colorful mood, it can just be like a basic normal light, but I thought it would add an extra nice point of, um, interest, especially if I ever do videos at night too, it's going to be even more like moody and dramatic. Um, and then of course my gorgeous, uh, Daft Punk artwork, which is like one of my most, is my most favorite piece of art. Um, I decided that was in a different part of the house and I decided it would make a really cool backdrop. Um, and also it, it's one of my favorite pieces of art. So I felt it really deserves to be showcased in a better way. Um, and it looked really great when I put it here, but I took it to the next level by just put, putting some, um, LED strip light behind it. And I feel like, and that also is, you know, you can put it in different colors as well. Um, depending on your aesthetic brand colors, whatever mood you're trying to give off, um, and I think it really elevates the piece and um, elevates the space. Um, so yeah, just adding some extra lights. Uh, the the light bulb, it was four, four light bulbs for 20 bucks. So that's very affordable in my opinion. And then the strip light was $10. Um, and then I also purchased one small neon um, 
like a lightning bolt I'm going to hang up here but I wanted to record some videos first and get an idea of like my framing and where it would fit best in the um, video and then I have some other art pieces I want to hang up as well and it'll be kind of interesting to see how my channel background progresses and that's something I actually enjoy with a lot of youtubers I follow um, I noticed that the more following that they get and the more they get sort of in their their flow of like the content they're doing, their sets get better. Um, and um, and I think that's just something that's really fun to watch. Um, but anyways, <laughs> and my fourth tip is for your background to keep it neat and tidy. And while some people may look at this and think it looks a little bit cluttered, I try to do it like a very intentional clutter um like these things were placed here purposely it wasn't just like thrown down without a thought um and so for you that might be different how you know how many items you would want to put in your background but i think it's important to keep them be thoughtful about what you're putting in there and not keep it too busy because you want people to be I, I, like personally i think you want people to be interested in it but not distracted to where they can't understand what you're saying or they think your house is so messy, like why should they listen to you, you know? So it's like, you wanna keep it tidy, but have a little bit of personality. Um, yeah, so that's my fourth tip. And I feel like if you, once you set, if you can designate some kind of space that you can actually just keep it that way, it makes it a lot easier to maintain and to be shooting videos consistently as well. Because if it's something that, like this is my actual like desk and workspace too. Um, and I really like being here, but it's just always like this. So when I start shooting a video, aside from, you know, turning on my ring light and placing it in the right way and setting up my little tripod, that's the only work I have to do to be able to just start like rolling. And I think that the, sim like, the simpler you can make your process is better. Um, whether you have a perfect set or not, having a designated space, of course, definitely um, is super helpful. And then my last tip about making a YouTube background is to just have fun with it. Um, like I mentioned, I noticed a lot of YouTubers, their background slowly changes over time, and I'm sure mine will as well. And that's kind of part of the process is just like learning what you like, learning what looks good, learning what feels right. And then of course, over time, like your taste might change, or maybe even the type of content you make might change. And so, um, you know, if you, if you, if you want to like adjust things accordingly to that with your backdrop stuff, whatever, um, but I think it's something not to be taken too seriously. I think it's something that is almost a form of artwork in itself, making a unique looking background. Um, like I said, someone who worked in set design for film, it, it is its own form of art, but I haven't really seen it done a whole lot or talked about a whole lot on YouTube besides like lighting setups. I've seen a few like decor pages and stuff. Uh, but they were kind of elaborate and I, I felt like they're just not very practical for the average person. So I wanted to make this video to share a, you know, a simple steps that I took for a very low cost. Um, aside from the lighting, I didn't buy any extra furniture. I just used what I had already and I just rearranged it. Um, and again, if you're feeling like that's the other good thing about having a blank slate uh, when in setting up your plain backdrop is that when you do that you can kind of shop around your house and see like oh like what what's in this room that maybe that will look cool or so you know what, how, how would that look and uh, another thing I do is sometimes I'll you know I move I move it around I take a step back I look and I see does it look good mm -mm, doesn't quite feel right oh move it to this side move it to that side maybe I just don't even need it at all uh, I do spend some time um, playing around with that but to me that's part of the fun of doing these sort of things in the process but yeah so if uh you are interested in knowing more about this please let me know and um i really enjoyed remaking this and i'm super excited to have a youtube set now which i feel like actually reflects uh, what I do, who I am, my personality, and the type of content I'm trying to, uh, the content I'm sharing with the world. Um, but if you like this video, of course, please hit subscribe, share, like, follow, all that great stuff. If you implement any of these tips, let me know. Tag me on Instagram at Everyday Avant Garde. I would love to see what you do. And if you'd like, I would be happy to share it with my followers as well. Um, because I think it's just really great to see how we can inspire each other and pull ideas from each other. And yeah, so that's it. I will catch you on the next video. Thank you so much.